Welcome back to YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to take a Raspberry Pi and a little piece of free software to block ads on your entire network. That includes your tablets, your phones, your computers, everything that's installed on your network. This will block it for you. So let's go ahead and jump down the computer. I'm going to show you how we can set this up in about five minutes. All right, so get rolling on this project. We're just going to need a few pieces of software to get everything set up. Like I said, it'll take us about five minutes total once you have all the software. So what we'll do is we're going to download Raspbian and Jesse Lite right here. I'll include a link to all of this in the description below. That way you guys can jump right to the website and download anything that you need to. So Raspbian and Jesse Lite doesn't in include the, uh, the user interface that you'll see with uh, Pixel here. So we'll just download the Lite version. That's all we're going to need. So I've already downloaded it. Once you have Raspbian downloaded, we need to go ahead and throw that onto the SD card. So we'll open up Win32 Disk Imager. We'll go ahead and jump to our desktop, which has our images folder. And we'll go ahead and grab Jesse Light here. Once we have that, we'll go ahead and hit right. Make sure that you have the correct device selected here so that you don't accidentally overwrite another USB drive or external hard drive or something like that. So we'll make sure we have E and we'll hit write. After that, we'll just go ahead and hit continue and it'll start writing the files to the SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead and then when we get back, we'll go ahead and continue. Okay, so here we are. We've got our Raspberry Pi plugged into our monitor or in my case, we have it plugged into a capture card. And now what we need to do is log into our Raspberry Pi. To do that, we're just gonna use the default credentials of Pi and the password is raspberry all lowercase. Now you'll have a command prompt and at this point, like I said, this is partially optional. Uh, reason being is if you wanted to just plug a monitor and keyboard into your Raspberry Pi every time you wanted to make mo uh, modifications, you could definitely do that. That's up to you. But I prefer to log into them remotely, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Uh, to pull up the tool to enable SSH, we need to type sudo and then raspi-config. The first thing we're gonna do because we're enabling SSH is we're gonna change the user password. To do that, we're gonna click on the first option there. It's gonna tell us to enter a new password. I'm gonna enter my password. Okay, helps if I have the numlock on. There we go, password changed successfully. Now the reason we wanna do that is because we are enabling SSH, which allows for remote access into our Raspberry Pi. If someone ever gained access to your network and they were able to, uh, to find the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, it'd be really easy for them to get in if, they, uh, if you didn't change that password because all they'd have to do is use the default. Now to enable SSH, we're gonna drop down to option five under interfacing options. And we're just gonna to go to SSH. It's going to ask us if we want to enable the SSH server. We'll click yes. And then it confirms that the SSH server has been enabled. At this point, we can go and click OK and press the right arrow key until we get to finish. We should see the command prompt at the bottom. And at this point, our Raspberry Pi is ready to be logged in remotely. You can also, at this point, grab the IP address of your Raspberry Pi so that it makes it a little easier to log in. All you need to do is type if config and under ethernet zero, we see our inet address, which is gonna be the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Go and write that down and that'll make things a little bit easier for the next step. So let's go and jump back to the computer and I'm gonna show you guys how to log in remotely using Putty. All right, here we are, we're back at the PC and I already have Putty launched. Uh, like I said, I will include the download link for all of the software I'm using in the description below. That way you guys can find everything real easily. Now to log into our Raspberry Pi remotely, all we need to do is go to the host name here and I'm just gonna type the IP address using the correct keyboard, of course. Put that one down there. Now we're gonna type the host name or the IP address. In our case, we're just gonna type the IP address. There we go. And hit okay. 
it pulls up our terminal window right here. And let me go ahead and resize the window so that you guys can get a better view. Okay, so now that we've got that resized a bit, um, let's go ahead and log in. We're gonna go ahead and use the username pi, and then we're gonna type in the password that we created uh, in the previous step when we were in the configuration tool. So I'll just go ahead and type that in. Okay. And we're back at the same prompt that we saw when we were plugged into the monitor. At this point, we're just gonna pull up a website. And this link will be in the description below as well. Let me turn off that window capture. There we go. And this is the software that we're using. It's called Pi-Hole. And this is a little bit better than a web blocker that you, or an ad blocker that you would install in your browser. Uh, reason being is it actually blocks the, uh, the advertisement before it even gets into your network because it, it's based off of the DNS. Uh, so when you type in an address, and it starts bringing everything back in, it blocks it before it even finds the IP of the remote server for that, for that specific ad. There are two, there's two ways to install this. We're just gonna go through the easy way. You can also go through all of their code and install it manually if you'd like, but we're just gonna grab this code right here at the bottom. We're gonna right click and hit copy and pull up Putty once more. Now to paste this in here, all you have to do is select your putty window and right click. And now it is pasted. Just hit enter. And it'll start going through the installation process. Okay, and as long as we don't get any more prompts from here, I'll just go ahead and fast forward everything. And then when it comes back, I'll show you guys how to log in whitelist sites that you want to whitelist, such as YouTube or um, if there's another site that you feel you want to support and so you want to whitelist them, I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's go ahead and fast forward and I'll see you guys in just a few seconds. Okay, so the installation is finished and now we've been brought up to the configuration window. At this point, we'll just go ahead and hit our enter key for OK. Uh, there is a link here if you'd like to donate if you do like the software. Now it's telling us that it is a server so that it would like to set a static IP. Uh, so in the next few steps, we may be installing a static IP as well. For this installation, I'm going to choose OpenDNS. If you prefer Google or Level 3 or Norton, whatever you prefer, you'll just go ahead and select that right here. There is also an option if you go down to the bottom for custom. So if you have your own DNS server or you have a different DNS server that you prefer, you can just type custom and then it would ask you for the IP address right there. But for this installation, we're gonna choose OpenDNS, and I'm gonna deselect IPv6 because I'm not using it in my network. And we'll just go ahead and hit OK. Now it's currently telling us our current IP address that we have set up on our Raspberry Pi. In this case, uh, because I have a range that I set all my static IPs in, I'm gonna go ahead and change that. This will be different for your network most likely, so make sure you uh, take a look at your network and assign the static IP accordingly or hit no and for my network I'm going to set this to 251 and hit enter for the default gateway it should pull that from the uh, the IP settings if it automatically pulled one from your network if not you could type the gateway right here and then it's just asking us if the settings are correct we'll go ahead and hit yes for this install, I am going to leave the web the web admin interface on. Uh, you can actually whitelist domains from there. You can see logs to see how many ads have been blocked or how many have been let through. So we can go and hit on, and we will leave log queries on as well. Otherwise, the the graphs in the web interface are completely useless. But at this point, it's going to finish the installation, and when it comes back, I'll show you guys the web. Uh, the web interface and also show you one last piece once we get finished here. Okay, so now the installation is complete. It's going to give us a little bit of information that we need when we're ready to go ahead and log in. It'll give us the IP address along with the password that we need to log into the web in interface. So let's go ahead and just write down that password real quick. And then take note of the IP address that you said as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Let me get rid of this Raspberry Pi here. 
And now we need to go to 192.168.254.251 slash admin. In your case, it would be whatever you set the static IP to slash admin. And we can see even though we haven't logged in, it already is giving us some information such as the DNS queries blocked today, total DNS queries, uh, number of queries that were blocked, and then the number of domains that are currently being blocked as well. We can also see that it gives us some Raspberry Pi status information, such as the core temp, the load, and the memory usage. So let's go ahead and log in and see what it gives us. So it's asking us for the password. That would be the one that we wrote down on the installation completes page. Okay. And we'll just click that. All right, and now we can see that the we get a little bit more information. We can see what has been uh, queried. We can see query types, destinations over time. And the cool thing here is we can actually set our whitelist and blacklist. So we don't have to do that from the command prompt as well. You can do it right from the web interface. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and click whitelist here and show you guys how to add a whitelist. So we can see our uh, our ad blocking uh, lists that we're downloading are already whitelisted. I'm also going to go ahead and whitelist youtube.com. You don't have to do this, but I usually whitelist youtube.com and any other site uh, that I feel that I want to contribute to, or there's creators that I want to contribute to. So I will also unblock uh, or whitelist twitch.tv because those are two of the main sites that I use that are generate or content creators are generate their revenue through ads. So I like to unblock them. That is an optional step if you guys would like to go and do that. But if there are any other sites that you guys want to add to the whitelist, you can just do that right here. If there's a site that it's coming through as an ad, but you want to blacklist it, you can do that under the blacklist by also typing the domain here or following the example of subdomain.domain.com. So you can add that there as well. To take this a step further, you could, at this point, just take the IP address of the Pi hole and go into the DNS settings on your computer, set that as your DNS server, and then your computer would uh, have the ad blocker installed. Now we're going to take that a step further by going into our router. I'm going to click my Unify settings here and close down my properties. Okay. And under my settings, I have an option for DHCP name server. I've currently got these set manually to the Google DNS servers, but I'm going to remove the first one. And on the second one, I'm going to type the IP address of our pie hole that we just set up. And then I'm going to click save. And in my case, if I go to devices, I'll see that my router is now provisioning. And this is going to be different for everybody's router, but you should see some sort of DNS setting inside your router where you can change that. So now that uh, my router has been provisioned and it should have the new DNS settings, let's go ahead and go to, let's say in gadget.com because I've got it right here on my bar. And let's see if it pops up with the ads. Okay, and it did. So what we need to do is Click our start button menu, and we're going to open up our command prompt. We open our command prompt. We'll do an IP config slash renew, and this should pull the new DNS settings from the router. If we wanted to verify that, we could go ahead and do an IP config all. And if we scroll up under DNS servers, we see 254.251, so it pulled the correct one. So if we hit close, we go back to Engadget.com. Let's see if it pulls up ads this time. It may still pull them up because it might have them cached. Okay, and it doesn't look like it's going to pull up the ads. So now we see the ad choices area is blacked out, and so is this one here. Uh, we can test this on, uh, let's try Yahoo.com. Just because I know that is a site with a lot of ads. And it looks like it is already blocking the ads. So we've got our blank areas with no ads in them. And we're all set. We'll go ahead and go back to the console. And if we click the dashboard, 
we see that 17 DNS queries were blocked today. So that was 17 sites that uh, contained ads. And there were a total of 51 DNS queries so far. So that should be everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment below. And I'll see you guys next time.